Hey everyone, Stigler here with my first attempt at an unboxing. Uh, today we're going to do Death Valley Battles for the Shenandoah, a new release by GMT Games, and the seventh in the series of Great Battles of the American Civil War. Now before we get started though, full disclosure, I was a member of the playtest team on this project. And uh, I was also in charge of producing the Vassal modules for the playtest and also for general use. So I am a bit biased, I will admit that. But anyway, we'll soldier on regardless. Some other things to mention. This game, uh, as you can see with the big three-inch thick box and the heft of about five pounds, is... Uh, what I consider the hobby's first Desi game, in that there are 10 battles in this box. Now, uh, GMT will tell you that it's 8, but actually it's 10, and here's why. Uh, this is a set of battles um, in the Civil War fought in the Shenandoah Valley in two time periods, 1862 and 1864. So in 1864, you have the battles of Second Kearns Town, Third Winchester, Cedar Creek, New Market, and Fisher's Hill. And for 1862, which is uh, Thomas J. Stonewall Jackson's most famous campaign, you have First Kearns Town, First Winchester, and then you have Cross Keys and Port Republic, each played on separate maps, and you can play them together as a Cross Keys slash Port Republic mini campaign game. So by GMT's math, that's one battle called Cross Keys Port Republic, but in reality, it's actually three. So that's 10 games jammed in one box. Um, the value quotient here is just off the off the charts. So let's have a look here, the back of the box, a little preview there of the map or one of the maps. And uh, I guess with that, we'll kind of get started with the shrink wrap and have a look at what's inside. So let's get this box open. Notice that the, the boxes recently from GMT are getting a little bit sturdier. I uh, just got a copy of Last Hundred Yards and it also had a really nice thick cover. So that's really nice. All right, so uh, another development in the series is that this heralds the, the latest version, the 2019, or I think kind of version 5.0 of the rules. Um, this series has been around since 1999 in the uh, chit-pull iteration that GMT started with uh, Three Days of Gettysburg. And they've been through four major revisions and uh, a number of uh, smaller revisions. This one is a 5.0 and there have been some uh, overall series clarifications that have been hanging around for years and years. And there have been some new things added and uh, some pretty heavy work on the artillery rules specifically to overhaul them and make them better. So we can see we have a pretty nice looking rule book with some color in it. Very nice. And some other things that you will notice here are these little bullets here, which denote some changes from earlier versions. So the people who are more familiar with the series 
can quickly locate rules that may have changed from what they're most familiar with. So there's your series rule book. Comes to about 40 pages in the end. Very good quality there. And now we get into the battle books. Here's the battle book for the uh, 1862 battles here. And here we have some nice sepia toned uh, photos for each of the battles that herald them. And then for the setup, we have an interesting color scheme where you can see the unions setups are tinted in blue and the Confederate setups are tinted in gray here. It's very nice. So as mentioned, uh, for 1862, we've got uh, some special rules to deal with skirmishers um, and also the aforementioned, I call it, five battles. And after that, we have the 1864 battle book here, a little bit uh, longer. The battles, the larger battles tend to be here in 1864, uh, including a couple of two mappers. So you actually get a couple of battles that are, in effect, mini monsters. This one weighs in at uh, 48 pages and has the same sort of layout here. Lots of diagrams and a handy dandy counter manifest there in the back so that you can make scans of counters that get lost or if anything should happen to them. Very good stuff. Here's a nice added bit of value as if this package needs it are two counter trays to give you kind of a head start in sorting out the, I believe, 1,200 counters that come with this. Packet of dice, nicely uh, colored, one blue and one gray. Now we get to the maps. Now these are really, 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 really nice. Greg Lawback, the chief developer, and Charlie Kibler combined to create some really, really outstanding looking maps, and they really pop. The versions we had in playtest I thought were print ready, and they looked really, really good. And then once the game was submitted to GMT, Charlie Kibler just added a little something something to them that really really makes them pop with these uh, tans and browns uh, even for battles that were fought in the fall you have some orange trees and red trees in there with the greens it's just just gorgeous to play on this is the Cedar Creek North map this is one of the two mappers and also you'll notice that the maps are double printed so that they could uh, keep some costs down. This is the north map for another two mapper or third Winchester. Here we have a bit more uh, green in, in the color palette here. And these really, really look great. So you've got one two, three, four, five double-sided maps to cover all ten battles. Uh, some of, most of the maps are full size, but a few of them are uh, smaller than that. They're, they kind of come out to a half size. Here's the cross keys map. And there's a similarly sized map for the Companion Battle of Port Republic. Also, the quality of the map, the very light varnish, 
Very good quality. Last but not least, we have our counters. And these have been around for a long time. Have a very good standard look. So we have one, two, three, four, five sheets of just uh, combat unit counters. And we have another one partially with that and mostly filled with the activation shits and the efficiency markers. And then it starts in on the informational counters. And then we have another set of just strength point markers and Breastworks informational counters. Each of the games has its own card, actually two per battle, one for each side that helps you keep track of the time, uh, which activation markers are in play, which have been played, um, which units have routed off the map, which have been eliminated, what the efficiency is for the commanders. And here's the one for First Winchester for the Confederates. All very, very nicely done. Kind of a textured blue or butternut color behind it. Very, very nice. Then for some of the larger battles, we have cards in the landscape mode here. Color coding. For the counters so you can tell easily at a glance uh, which units on the map are corresponding with which spot here on the organization cards and so you've got a total of 16 of these And also, you've got your player aids, terrain effects charts, one for each player. If you're playing around a big table. You've got the bifold player's aid cards here that have the most used combat tables and things like that. All on a very nice cardboard stock with a nice gloss to it. So that's it. You get a ton, a ton of value in this box. And that would be true even if the games weren't that good. But they are. Uh, all of the battles have been fairly extensively play tested and should keep people busy for a long time to come. Uh, reports are starting to filter in. Uh, on fan pages for the site and so far the response has been really good people are trying to get used to the new rules and uh, come to grips with the battles and the strategies and uh, I really think that uh, Death Valley is going to be an historic release for GMT and a watershed release in the series Great Battles of the Americans of War so this has been Stigler giving you an unboxing of Death Valley Battles for the Shenandoah, and we'll see you on the field.